Hi guys, that's here with another episode of my showcase series. This time it's episode 36, and today I will be showcasing the X-Men, volume one, key issue comic books in my personal collection. Yeah, I've got four huge piles here, guys. If you've been following my channel, I've been running polls on my community page, and I had 25 votes this time, which is the most so far. Thanks a million to everyone who had a vote. I gave three options and 12% of you voted for Thor issues. 28% voted for Marvel titled books like Premier, Spotlight, etc. And 60%, an overwhelming amount, voted for X-Men books. So I've got a ton of X-Men books and I'll do another showcase on other X-Men keys at some point. But this time I'm just focusing on volume one. Like I said, four big piles, guys. Let's get into the books. Starting with a fantastic AOK -OK and my earliest X-Men book. This came from my good friend, Comic Vantage. My best friend in the community. This is X-Men issue 24. And this is the first appearance and origin of Locust, who is Dr. August Hopper. Now, what is pretty special about this book, guys... This book was an A-OK -OK and it is signed by Stan Lee, the great man himself. Yep. This was signed in early 2002. I have a certificate of authenticity from my good friend Comic Vantage. And I cannot thank him enough for that. I would love to have met the great man, but at least I have his signature on a pretty old book. Up next is a character I really, really enjoyed in The Gifted TV show. The Gifted has just come on to Disney+. Plus. If you haven't watched it, check it out, guys. It's an X-Men-based show. This is X-Men issue 49. And this is the first appearance of Polaris, Laura Dane, the daughter of Magneto. Like I said, one of the lead stars of The Gifted TV show. It's also the first appearance of Mesmero, who is Vincent, but his surname is unknown. And it is the origin of Beast, Henry Philip Hank McCoy. Now, I only paid £10.50 for this copy. It is probably around about a 3.0. We have a bit of writing at the top. But uh, pretty solid other than that, guys. And I'm happy to own the first Polaris. Up next is another key, but I only paid £2 for this at a con. It is Beat, but it is X-Men issue 54. And this is the first appearance and origin of Alex Summers, who later, of course, becomes Havoc. He was a star of the prequel X-Men films. It's also the first appearance of the living Pharaoh, Ahmet Abdol, who later becomes the living Monolith, and the origin of Angel in this issue. This was in March 2018. Like I say, pretty beat up, but you can't go wrong for an X-Men key for two quid. Even got a little bit of tape on that book. Up next, we've got a big, big book, and this is a nice graded book, and I paid next to nothing for it. It is X-Men, issue 101, guys. Huge book, looks pretty special in the Mylar. This is the first appearance of Jean Grey, of course, overtaken by the Phoenix Force. And that has been uh, highlighted in a few films now. It's also the first appearance of the Phoenix Force. I paid just £2 for this book. And very, very solid copy. Yeah, it is a pence copy, but I notice even the pence copies can go for well into three figures. Picked this up at the Malt House Emporium, which is like an antique store in Tewkesbury, from a good friend, John Christopher. Picked up a load of great keys that day. This is X-Men issue 108. Another book I picked up at that time. This is the first John Byrne artwork on the X-Men title. Is a collaboration of Chris Claremont and John Byrne that begins and runs through to issue 143. Like I said, that is X-Men issue 108. The Corsair is revealed, revealed to be Cyclops' dad in that issue as well. Up next, we have issue 114. £2 a book I was paying. Crazy stuff. This is the first time the word uncanny appears above the X-Men. But the title did not officially become Uncanny X-Men until issue 142. 
Up next, this is issue 116. And this is the debut of Wolverine's Healing Power. Again, just two quid a book. Some are pence, some are cents, but you can't go wrong from nice bronze books. Up next, issue 117. And this is the first appearance of the Shadow King, Amal Farouk, a powerful, powerful psychic who was the villain of the Legion TV show. It's the origin of Professor X concerning a difficult psychic battle against Amal Farouk, which was the inspiration to create the X-Men. And Professor X recalls his first encounter with Storm in this issue. Paid a bit more for this one, £2.78. Nice grade again. Up next, issue 118. And this is the first appearance of Mariko Yashada, uh, Wolverine's now deceased fiance, and she appeared in the Wolverine movie. Two seventy eight for that one. Up next is a nice book. Looks better in the Moiler again. This is X Men or the Uncanny X Men issue one hundred and twenty. We all know the book. It's the first cameo appearance of the Alpha Flight team. First cameo of Sasquatch, Aurora. The Shaman, Snowbird, North Star. And uh, this is the first time where Wolverine tells someone his name is Logan. I paid a pound for this from the legend that is Carboot Tony. The comic Santa. Up next, issue 123 and another book from Carboot Tony. And this is, <laughs> this is the, an issue, believe it or not, where Storm's nipple is exposed in a panel where she is blow-drying her hair. Now, this was drawn onto the panel by John Byrne, but was not visible on the printed page until high-resolution digital technology became available. Wow. <laughs> Up next, issue 125. Paid £2.78 for this one. This is the first cameo appearance of Mutant X, a.k.a. Proteus, who is Kevin McTaggart, the son of Moira McTaggart. Issue 126, the first full appearance of Proteus. Like I said, Kevin McTaggart, a featureless human shape composed of white light. Phoenix, uh, Jean Grey, rejoins the X-Men as well in this issue. £2 for that one at the Birmingham Con. This is a lovely key. X-Men 129, and this is the first appearance of a whole host of big characters, including Shadowcat, of course, is Catherine Kitty and Pride. Uh, first appearance of the White Queen, it was Emma Frost. First appearance of the Black King was Sebastian Shaw. First cameo appearance of the Hellfire Club. The dark, it's the Dark Phoenix Saga Part 1, and it's a pence copy, but again, it's very nice, and I paid £2.78 for that. Big, big book, that one. Up next is another nice one. This is Uncanny X-Men issue 130. This is the first appearance of Dazzler. He was actually had a little cameo in the X-Men Dark Phoenix movie, which I thought was not as bad as people made it out to be. Yeah, there were some plot holes, but I enjoyed it for what it was. It's the first full appearance of the Black King, Sebastian Haram Shaw. And uh, this is the Dark Phoenix part two saga. Up next, issue... Oh, what did I pay for that one? I paid a little bit more for that one. I paid £8 for the first Dazzler. Issue 131. This is the first cover appearance of the White Queen, Emma Frost. The second appearance of Dazzler and Kitty Pride, And Jean Grey be becomes the Black Queen of the Hellfire Club in this issue. This is the Fate Dark Phoenix Saga Part 3. A pound for that one. Pick that one up in Western Supermare. In the Imaginarium. Up next, issue 132. This is the first full appearance of the White Bishop was Donald Pierce and Donald Pierce of course appeared in the Logan movie he was the antagonist so also the first appearance of Tessa who later becomes Sage and she was a character in the gifted TV show okay so uh, this is the first full appearance of the Hellfire Club and the Dark Phoenix Saga part four up next issue 134 and this is the first appearance of Dark uh, Phoenix Jean Grey of course, that happened in the Dark Phoenix movie. Two paying for that one. Issue 136. This is where Jean, Gla Jean Grey reclaims control after uh, suppressing the Dark Phoenix with the help of Professor X. This is the Dark Phoenix Saga Part 8. 
Up next, issue 139. This is the first appearance of Heather Hudson, who later becomes the Guardian and then the Vindicator. It's the debut of the new brown and tanned Wolverine costume. Kitty Pride joins the X-Men as Sprite in this issue. Two quid for that one. Up next was a lovely AOK -OK from a good friend, JPL, Flash Comics Geekdom, who's no longer in the community. But it, uh, I think he posts on Instagram sometimes. This is Uncanny X-Men issue 141. Like I said, this was an AOK -OK to me and my boy, Ethan. This is the first appearance of Pyro, uh, who was uh, St. John Allardyce. Uh, the first appearance of Avalanche. More of a girl, of course, who is Rachel Summers. First appearance of Destiny. And it's the first appearances and deaths of Franklin Richards and Magneto, birth, both of Earth 811. It's an unnamed cameo appearance of DC's Lois Lane and Jimmy Olsen in this book as well. Great issue. Bang for your buck with it. Nothing for that. Just a freebie. Up next, issue 143. This is the final collaboration of Chris Claremont on John Byrne that began, like I said, with the issue I showed you. X-Men 108. Pound for that one off Carbute Tony. Issue 148, and this is the first appearance of Caliban, who I enjoyed in both the X-Men Apocalypse movie, it was okay, and the much better Logan movie. Angel quits the X-Men in this issue as well. Okay, on to the second big pile of books. We've got issue 161, and this is the uh, origin of Magneto. Five pound for that one, overpaid a little bit. I'm a budget master normally. Issue 162. And I picked this one up because there's rumours of these going to be in the next Thor film. This is the first appearance of the Star Sharks, aka Space Sharks. And uh, they are rumoured to be appearing in the Thor movie. And it's also a solo story featuring Wolverine in this issue. Paid six pound twenty five for this on eBay. Issue 164. This is the first appearance and origin of Binary. Of course, it was Carol Danvers. It later becomes Miss Marvel and then Captain Marvel. Issue 166 is a nice key. This is the first appearance of Lockheed, who is the dragon um, from the New Mutants movie. Uh, Magic's little pet, or well, Rasputin's little pet. And uh, it's the death of the brood queen in this. Now, Lockheed is unnamed until issue 168. Paid £4.50 for that at the Birmingham Con 2017. Issue 168, this is the first appearance of Madeline Pryor. Uh, Madeline Jennifer Pryor Summers as an adult. And the first, like I said, first mention of the name Lockheed. So that goes well with 166. Paid eight quid for that, but I think it was worth it in November of 2017 at the Birmingham Con. Up next, issue 169. And this is the first appearance of the Morlocks team. And they were in the uh, basically in the last stand movie. First appearance of Callisto, Plague, Mask, Sunder, and Kitty Rock Pride becomes Ariel in this issue. Two quid for that one. Birmingham Con, 2018. Up next, issue 176. And this is the first appearance of Valerie Cooper, a government official for mutant regular, uh, regulatory practices inspired uh, the formation of X Factor. Five pound for that one at the Gloucester Con. Then we go to 179. And this is the first appearance of a character that was in the X-Men Last Stand movie, and that is Leech. And his name was uh, James or Jimmy. He was basically a mutant who could take other mutants' powers as they approached. You know what? I watched The Last Stand again with my boy Ethan. Again, not as bad as people make out. I enjoyed it. Uh, £3.50 for that one. We all know this one. This is Uncanny X-Men issue 184 and the first appearance of Forge, who has the mutant ability to comprehend and build nearly anything technological. Surprised he hasn't been in live action yet. But of course, he was a big part of the X-Men animated show I enjoyed. It's also the first appearance of Naze, a chain mystic, a chain mystic and mentor to Forge. £3.59 for that on eBay. Up next, issue 188. And this is the first appearance for a character that was in my encyclopedia called Ad The Adversary. 183 for that one. Up next is a nice key. Issue 193. This is the first appearance of Firestorm 
who is Angelica Jones, of course, in mainstream continuity, having first appeared in the Spider-Man and his Amazing Friends uh, homage book to the animated show. And James Proudstar uh, appears in his classic Thunderbird costume in this issue. £2.78 for that one in Tewkesbury. Had to get this one. This is the first appearance of Fenris in issue 194. It was Andrea and Andreas von Strucker. They were basically in the Gifted TV show, a loose version. And believe it or not, in the David Hasselhoff, Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. movie, which I actually own. How with my hands up? Three quid for that one. Issue 199 is the first appearance of the Freedom Force. Basically, I think it's the Brotherhood of Mutants. Changed names for a little while. It's also the first appearance of the second Phoenix, who is Rachel Summers. 278 for that one. Issue 200. And this is where Professor X uh, quits the X-Men team and Magneto becomes the headmaster of the Xavier's Academy. And the Strucker twins go by the name Fenris collectively. Two quid for that one. Up next, issue 210. And this is the first cameo appearance of the Marauders. Again, like I said, they were in the X-Men last stand movie. First appearance of Riptide, who was in the X, uh, X-Men first class movie. First appearance of Malice, Harpoon, Skull Puncher, Scrambler. A lot of good characters. I love picking up live action appearances. What did I pay for that one? One pound of the legendary Carboot Tony. Another pound book here. And this is the first full appearance of the Marauders in issue 211. Issue 212. This is the first battle of Wolverine and Sabretooth. I'm just watching Wolverine Origins with Ethan. And uh, again... Not as bad as people make out. I mean, enjoy it a lot. Uh, Kitty Pride and Colossus leaves the team in this one. Pound from Carbute Tony. Another pound from Carbute Tony. This is the first cameo appearance of Mr. Sinister. Of course, Nathaniel Essex. And Psylocke joins the X-Men in this issue. Up next, we've got issue 215. And this is the first appearance of the Crimson Commando, Super Saber and Stonewall. Two quid for that one. Big book here. I've had two or three of these. This is Uncanny X-Men, issue 221. Very high grade from the legend that is Carboot Tony. We all know the book, guys. First full appearance of Mr. Sinister. Can't wait to see him in live action. Just a matter of time, I think. Uncanny X-Men next, issue 222. Classic battle between the X-Men and the Marauders. Issue 227. And this is the first appearance of the magical artifact Sage Perilous. Again, I have a, an encyclopedia that actually lists um, magical artifacts, countries, all sorts you can look on the hunt for. Up next, 229, we know this one. This is the first appearance of the Reavers team who were in the Logan movie. Bonebreaker, Pretty Boy, Skullbuster and Gateway. Three quid for that one. That is a comic shop in Swindon that I will never go to again. They charge everything by eBay, eBay prices. Issue 234, and this is where Madeline Pryor begins turning into the Goblin Queen. Too quick for that one. Issue 235, and this is the first appearance of the Geonosians and Geonosia. Like I said, uh, a pretty important place in uh, X-Men lore. Or country, I should say. I think it was last seen in the X-Men Dark Phoenix movie. Issue 236, and this is the first appearance of the Gene uh, Janeer, who is David Moreau. Two quid for that one. Nice little key here. I've had loads of these as well. Issue 244, this is the first appearance of Jubilee, or Jubilation Lee. Actually, she first appeared on Life Action in the Generation X movie. Then X-Men, X-Men 2, The Last Stand, Apocalypse. So uh, she's been in quite a few, only little cameos. Pound for that one off Carboot Tony. Nice high grade. Issue 245. And this is a bit of a parody issue of DC's Invasion Limited series. Now actually, Jean Grey appears full frontal nude in this issue, but it is not. But it is at a slight distance, so the specific detail is absent. Wow. I'll, look, I'll note down anything. And this is a, also a... A cameo appearance of Chewbacca, Yoda, Jabba, Boba Fett, Bid Fortuna, Darth Vader, an alien, Xenomorph, E.T., Alf, Clark Kent, Jimmy Olsen, Perry White, Hawkman, 
you name it, they're all in here. Pang for that one. We all know this book, issue 248, and this is the uh, first Jim Lee art on the X-Men. It's also the Death of Storm in this issue. 275 for that one. Up next, we've got, oh, yeah, issue 249, and this is the first appearance of Whiteout. It was a Savage Land mutant. Three quid for that one. Up next, issue 250, and this is the first appearance of Worm. There's a mutant name in it, Worm. On to the third big pile, guys. Let's see if I can get done in under 30 minutes. Up next, issue 256. This is the first appearance of Psylocke. As she appears Japanese, the truth about Psylocke's transformation from British-born mutant to Japanese-born telepath would not be told until X-Men uh, Volume 2, issues 20 to 24. It's also the first appearance of Quanon, who later becomes Revanche. A quid for that of the legend, Tony. Issue 257, this is the first Psylocke as Lady Mandarin. And it's also the first appearance of Psylocke's psychic knife. Two quid for that one. We all know this, big boy guys. This is Uncanny X-Men issue 266. And this is basically the second full appearance of Gambit, Remy LeBeau, chronologically first appearance in continuity. He has only appeared in live action in the X-Men Origins movie. The first appearance of Gambit is in X-Men Annual 14, actually. My copy is signed somewhere over down here by the penciler Mike Collins. And to go with that one, which I paid £2.75 for, I've got a free copy as well. So I've got two. And uh, like I said, and that one too is signed by Mike Collins. <laughs> Up next, issue 267. And this is the third appearance of Gambit. 279 for that. Uh, 268. We all know this one, just a classic cover. 281. And this is the first appearance of Trevor Fitzroy and the Upstarts team. Sorry, let's get that light in a bit better. We all know this book, issue 282. This is the first cameo appearance and first cover appearance of Bishop. It was Lucas Bishop. He appeared in the X-Men Days of Future Past movie. So it's the first appearance of Xavier Security Enforcers and uh, the death of Roulette in this issue. 259 for that one. That is the first printing. I also have the second printing, which has a gold ink background, which I paid a pound for. Nice to have. 283 is the first full appearance of Bishop, Lucas Bishop. It's also the first appearance of Games Master, who was Jeremy Stevens. £2.8 for that one. Issue 285 is the first appearance of Mikhail Rasputin, the brother of Colossus and Magic. Pound for that one in the Devon market of all places. Issue 299 is the first appearance of Graydon Greed, who is the son of Sabretooth. I do like Sabretooth in the Wolverine Or Origins movie. What do I pay for that one? Three quid. Up next, issue 300. And this is the first appearance of the Legacy Virus. Pound for that one. In the local gaming shop. Issue 305 is the first appearance of the Phalanx Race. They got hot, you know, I think, with the uh, Powers of X and House of X. House of Ten, was it? Or House of X? I didn't pick up the new issues, I must admit. 275 for that one. Issue 311 is the first cameo of the Phalanx team in their true form. Pound for that one. 312 is the first full appearance of the Phalanx in their true form. Three quid for that one. Issue 314 is the first full appearance of Shard. It was Shard Bishop, sister of Bishop. pound eighty-seven for that one. Uh, issue 316 is the first appearance of M, who was Monette, uh, Chevette, Clarice, Maria, Theresa, St. Croix, and she appeared in the uh, Generation X movie. Okay. It's also the first appearance of the M Twins. That's the new stand edition. I also have the Rainbow Foil cover. 
Issue 317 is the first appearance of a character I really enjoyed in The Gifted, and that was Blink, uh, Clarice Ferguson. And she also appeared in the X-Men Days of Future Past movie. So also the first appearance of Skin, it was Angelo Espinosa. Up next is the first appearance of Marrow in issue, I think it is 325. And in this issue, one of the creators moans about another creator for taking other people's work and using it for his own, basically copying. Up next, we have issue 327. And this is the uh, first appearance of Joseph, who was a Magneto clone. 275 for that one. Issue 332 is the first appearance of Ozzy Mandoyas. Two quid for that one. Issue 333 is the first full appearance of Bastian, who is Sebastian Gilberti. 275 for that one. Nearly there, guys. And the last pile. Issue 345 is the first appearance of Maggot, who is a Japheth. 275 for that one. Issue 366 is the uh, first appearance of Astra, who is a former member of the Brotherhood of Mutants. Also the first appearance of Vindaloo in this book. Two quid for that. Up next we've got issue 401, and this is the first appearance of the X-Corps team. Two quid for that. Issue 410 is the first appearance of Squid Boy, and he appeared in the animated show, which I enjoy. And Squid Boy is Samuel Pear. Like I say, quid for that one. Issue 415, this is where Iceman undergoes a mutation. Quid for that one. Issue 417. And this is the first appearance of Maximus Lobo. And the first appearance of Dominant Species. Two quid for that one. Sadly, this is not the one, this, uh, the version that is worth a lot of money. But this is issue 423. There is a, a really expensive version of this book. Where I think is something to do with the prices not being the same. Um, this is the Death of Bedlam and Skin in this issue. Too good for that. Issue 428 is the first appearance of Azazel. And he appeared in the X-Men First Class movie. And it's the origin of Nightcrawler in this book. Too quick for that one. Next up, issue 445 and the first appearance of The Fury. 150 for that. We all know this book. Issue 450. This is the fourth appearance of X-23. Uh, the first X-23 crossover, the first time X-23 appears in an X-Men titled comic. And like I said, the first meeting between X-23 and the X-Men. The first published meeting and battle of X-23 and Wolverine. £1.50 for that one. That can go for some good coin. As can this one. Issue 451, the fifth appearance of X-23 and the first X-23 and X-Men battle. Two quid for that one. Of course, she appeared in the Logan movie. Issue 455 is the first appearance of Hokaka. Uh, 150 for that one. Issue 467 is the first team appearance of the Shire Death Commandos, who is Black Cloak, Devo, Hypernova, Crate, Offset, Sega, Shell, and Warshot. Up next, issue 476, the first appearance of the X Bug Vehicle. Again, like I said, I've got an encyclopedia that actually. Tells you where the vehicles are. I'll pick up anything. A pound for that one. Issue 478 is the first appearance of Corvus Rookshire. And the first appearance of the Vice Chancellor Couture. Quid for that one. Issue 493 is the first appearance of the Uncanny X-Force team. And the first cover appearance of Hope Summers. Nice David Finch cover. Of course... David Finch is on my avatar. Uh, issue 528. This is the first appearance of Oya. It was ID Okonkwo. Uh, £2.8 for that one. And just a couple of annuals to finish up. In under 30 minutes, we've got X-Men issue 10. Annual, oh, sorry, annual 10. The first appearance of the X-Babies. And Longshot joins the X-Men in this issue. Two quid for that one. And the final book I'm going to show you is a nice one. It is X-Men annual 14. First full appearance, well, the first appearance of Gambit. Uh, this annual predates Uncanny X-Men 266 by a month. So there you go. And it also contains an alternate cover to this comic by Michael Golden. 
£8.50 for that. I've got a couple of them. That's it. On all under 30 minutes. Well, near enough. If you like what you see, please like and subscribe. I will be putting up another poll. Check out my previous playlist, guys. I've got a lot of content still to come. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.